An artifact installed at the new FO hospital has been alleged to have been removed from the hospital without authorization. However, following some investigation into the incident, the manager of the new hospital clarified that a request was received from the head office of WHO for a gift to be taken by Newe's delegation for the opening of their new office in Manila. He said that discussions with the director and the Minister of Health identified that a woven table mat or lily would be an appropriate gift. But due to the amount of time available to source a suitable gift, it wasn't until the final day that it was decided to take the lily from the hospital. It appears that in the two weeks to find a gift, there was nothing on the island at the time that they deemed fit to be presented to WHO. In a phone discussion with the minister yesterday, she confirmed that she did take the woven artifact as requested by the World Health Organization in recognition of their generous support to Niue or Niue has received over the years from WHO. According to a government official, the Warren table mat was specially commissioned and sourced specifically for the opening of the new F4 hospital in 2005 with NZ8 funds, which will also be considered a gift to the hospital. However, the manager of the new F4 hospital says he sees no fault in this decision as the hospital has now replaced the lily with a replica made by the same person. Considering the gift that was eventually taken has been hanging at the hospital since it was opened in 2005 and was considered a gift, whether this is appropriate to re-gift something that is six years old is questionable. Pacific Island Forum Secretariat's role in the Pacific region continues to harness its links with island states as it encourages countries' cooperation in the Pacific region to increase development in different sectors of national and regional strategies. The Pacific Plan is a living document established by Pacific leaders to encourage increased cooperation within the Pacific region. And this week, Small Island State Program Officer Mr. Fakawai Taumia from the Pacific Island Forum Secretariat arrived on the island to meet government officials and the island's new SIS desk officer. We caught up with Mr. Taumia today and asked about the role of the Secretariat and its importance to Niue and the region. I think it's very important uh, because the, uh, the leaders themselves uh, uh, established these positions. Uh, when the Pacific Plan was uh, approved in 2005, uh, they, well, after looking at the, uh, a lot of responsibilities of how to monitor the progress and implementation at a national level, so the leader decided that uh, the Foreign Secretary should uh, help the small island states uh, by providing a, a position uh, in, at the country level that uh, should be able to, to report on the progress of the Pacific Plan and also to work together with the Foreign Secretary at the national level, uh, not only to uh, fulfill the agreements that are being made, but to, to ensure that uh, the, the, the government and the uh, civil servants and other stakeholders understand that uh, uh, this position is not just like a position, but it's also a resource uh, that, need, that is there that needs to be utilized. Uh, as you all know, that, uh, uh, the, re that the setting up of uh, the regional organization, including the Pacific Islands Forum Secretary, is purposely there to provide regional assistance to benefit uh, national uh, uh, governments and, and, and the people at, at, the Pacific, at the Forum Island countries. All in all, I think it's, it's really important that uh, uh, we are here to, uh, to provide uh, help uh, to, our, uh, to our country. And that was the purpose of, of the regional architecture of all these uh, organizations, is to ensure that they are able to fill the gaps that are being identified at the national level. Now, with the monitoring processes that you, you mentioned earlier on, in regards to the US case, how are we standing um, from our national uh, strategic plan? What, what have we achieved um, from the Pacific plan? What have we achieved in the last few years since it was established? I think in terms of the, uh, the, the reports that we, uh, we have received uh, uh, in all the, uh, the, the thematic areas, uh, New have uh, 
progress very well. Eh? Uh, the de- the its national development strategy is clear and simple, eh? and it's very easy to. Uh, it's very friendly. Eh? Uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, the, in terms of uh, when we also look at the uh, uh, the MTGs and the, uh, the achievements of uh, of a new way. You know, it, it, it indicates that things are, are moving in, in the right direction eh? uh, compared, as compared to other, uh, to other countries. Uh, so, so far, uh, and I think with the little help that we provide for the SIS staff officer uh, to, to continue to maintain that uh, stride towards, uh, uh, so that uh, Niue is able to, uh, to provide benefits to, to the people. Mr. Tamir said Niue is also on track with its Millennium Development Goals or MDGs. New way is, to, is fairly doing well. Uh, uh, in Cook Islands and Samoa, uh, especially in education, they are very much uh, up there, and health, eh? and the services that are provided to the people. And I think I, I think it all goes down to 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 better networking. I mean, better coordination and uh, and working together in collaboration, not only between the bilateral uh, partners of uh, New Way but also with uh, the crop agencies working together. Mm-hmm. And I think if you, if you read the MTG report uh, that was, uh, uh, that was an approved by the leaders uh, uh, in this year's meeting, uh, you will see that uh, 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 most of the Polynesian countries, they are doing very well, especially on the education and the health uh, uh, front. Eh? The new small island state's desk officer for Niue is Mrs. Amy Hipper, Unfortunately, we were not able to receive an update regarding the latest developments from the officer today. Niue is now officially in cyclone season, observed from the 1st of November to the 30, 30th of April each year. Forecasts indicate that five to eight named cyclones are expected for the season, with activity expected to be below normal to the west of the dateline. Most countries west of the international dateline, including PNG, Solomons, Vanuatu, New Caledonia, and New Zealand, are likely to in- experience close to normal or lower than normal activity because of La Nina currently developing. Most of the tropics and subtropics can be severely affected by at least one tropical cyclone during the season, and all nations should remain vigilant. New emits maintain their campaign to the general public to be prepared and tune in to radio and television for any update and warnings throughout the season. New Year's eldest living centurion, Mokosehina Toy, has passed away at the age of 102 in the New Year 4 Hospital on the 26th of October. It was less than a month ago we brought you a story as Mrs. Toy celebrated her 102nd birthday. According to the family, Mokosehina lived a long and fruitful life and was laid to rest last Friday. She is survived by her children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren and even a great-great-grandchild. We would like to extend our deepest sympathies to the family of Mokosehina Toy. Niwe Rugby 7 is ranked a disappointing 8th placing out of 10 teams in the Oceania Cup competition in Samoa held over the weekend. Niwe, who looked strong in the beginning of the competition, defeating arch-rival Cook Islands 19-12 and then Solomon Islands 27-7, could not continue their good fortune, losing to Samoa by a staggering 47-0, then to Australia by a very narrow margin, 24 points to 17 for Niwe. With two wins to place third in their pool, Niue progressed to the quarterfinals with Tonga, but unfortunately, Niue also lost to Tonga 15-10. The continued bad luck for Team Niue also see them lose to newcomers American Samoa in the plate semi-final 17 points to 5. As it stands, Niue did not qualify for the Wellington League of the IRB circuit. Yesterday's Melbourne Cup horse race in Australia was dominated by an all-European affair whilst back home on the local betting scene. New Orleans and a handful of visitors flocked to betting venues especially established for the occasion. The favourite to win number one American from the USA left his run too late and was overshadowed by the powerful number three, Donadan from France. 
who won by a brush of the nose and the finish line with number 12 Reid Cadeau from Great Britain and number 9 Lucas Cranach from Ireland finishing the top three. American finished a close fourth placing. Not only were the punters excited over their wins, but spectators also got in the act with the annual hat competition held at Pacific Way Bar. Numbers were low this year, with more male entries included in the lineup, but winners entertained the crowd with some old and new favourites. One of the judges from overseas said it was fantastic to see many locals join in the Melbourne Cup atmosphere. One of the competitors who frequent the event, Mrs. Etty Willitama, said she is always happy to join the event, and this year Mr. Willitama also attended the annual event. The youngest competitor, Minnie Rubin, also managed to win of the, one of the popular categories. The men's crown returned to the number one supporter, young Bodine Tandaki. The organizers of the event and Pacific Way Bar wish to thank all participants of the Malcolm Melbourne Hat Competition and patrons and a special whakawila mahaki to all the sponsors of the event for continued support. And to end our news bulletin, Celebrating cultural heritage and taking ownership was the idea behind a cultural dance concert held last week. A number of local youth groups participated in a cultural dance night organised by the Nui Youth Council. Initially, the event was planned to coincide with the Constitution celebrations, but was postponed due to the various engagements and activities during the celebrations. According to the organizing committee, the purpose of the night was to incorporate the cultural night as an annual event in constitution program with great emphasis on traditional dances, songs, drama and promoting cultural appreciation and ownership. The theme for the night was making children and new partners in disaster risk reduction. The event was made possible with funding from UNESCO under the Atuhau Fuatamui Hakako project and additional sponsorship from SOPAC and Swanson. Groups were given a small incentive for the efforts and encouraged to participate in next year's event, which will hopefully be competitive. That's our news bulletin for tonight. Good evening.